Welcome to week six. You're now the expert and therefore we can take you to the frontier where we demonstrate how we in our research group use exactly these techniques to quickly come up with lots of different algorithms so that we can choose the best one. Let's get started. Okay, so what do we have here? We have three equations in three unknowns, three linear equations in three unknowns. And somewhere in your math career, you were taught how to solve this. Okay, what were you taught? Well, you can take multiples of rows and add or subtract them off of other rows and not change the solution. Unless you multiply by zero, but we're not going to do that. So how would you do that? Well, you would take the first row and add it to the second row, and that would take this term away, and then you would take two times the first row and subtract it off the last row, and that would take that term away, and then you would be left with a smaller system of two equations and two unknowns, and then you would take a multiple of this uh, equation and subtract it from that equation, and eventually what you would end up with is an upper triangular system and then you could solve for z and once you know what z is you could solve for y and once you know what y is you know what z and y are and therefore you can solve for x. Coming back to you. Okay now because it was a lot of bother carrying all of these symbols x, y and z around what you were then told was to say well create a two-dimensional array with the coefficients so we would end up with 1, minus 2, 3, minus 1, 1, minus 2, 2, minus 2, 6. And you recognize that this simply captures everything that's up here. And then you may have been told, and then append the right-hand side like that. And now what you can do is just do multiples of the rows of coefficients as you go along instead of also having to write these x, y's and z's around. And lo and behold, this may have been your first exposure to what was then called a matrix. Okay, so I just may come back to you. Okay, so what did we then do with this? Well, this is going to be a little hard to keep track of because I want to always think in terms of subtracting a row from another row. And as a result, we're going to take the negative sometimes and sometimes the positive. So hang in there as I do this, okay? So, what can we do? Well, we can take minus one times the first row and subtract it off of this row, okay? So let, let's, let's write that down somewhere. We'll write it down here. Minus one times the first row is be, being subtracted off of the second row and of course that just means that we take the first row and we add it to the second row, right? Okay, so that becomes a zero, that is added to that and becomes a minus one, that is added to that and becomes a one, that is added to that and becomes a three. <clears throat> okay, so far so good. Then we need to take two times the first row and subtract it off of the last row. Okay, so we'll write down a two here. And what? Well, that becomes a zero. Two times that subtracted from that means that uh, this becomes a two. Two times that subtracted from that becomes a zero. 2 times that subtracted from that becomes a minus 4. Okay? And then what? Then we say, okay, we can think of this as a smaller subsystem. And then what? Then we can do minus two times this row subtracted from that row, which of course is the same as doing two times this row and adding it to that row. And if you do two times this and add it to that, you get zero. If you do two times that and add it to that, you get two. And if you do two times that and add it to that, you get two. 
okay? And then you notice that this is an upper triangular system and you can say, oh, this really represents 2 times z, so z is really 2 divided by 2 and therefore 1, and then you can take that and plug it in here and say, oh, minus 1 times y plus 1 must be equal to 3, and you can compute y out of that, etc. All right? So let's take that away. Now here is the magic. Okay? Let's go back up here and let's think back of the matrix that we had there. And let's write it over here. 1 minus 2, 3 minus 1, 1 minus 2, 2 minus 2, 6. And let's take this and let's write it over here. Minus 1, 2, minus 2. And let's take this upper triangular matrix and let's write it here. 1, minus 2, 3, minus 1, 1, 2, with zeros below the diagonal. Okay? Now, this is the part that always makes me feel like a magician, okay? Nothing up my sleeves. Here we go. If we go and we put 1's on the diagonal in this matrix, and we put zeros above the diagonal, then magic. If you multiply this matrix times that matrix, you get that matrix. Okay? So, this we can refer to as a unit lower triangular matrix. It's got 1's on the diagonal, and that's what we call a unit lower triangular matrix. This we can refer to as an upper triangular matrix, and what we're saying is if you compute L times U, you get back A. And this then is known as the LU factorization of matrix A. And it turns out that you can compute the LU factorization of matrix A, and then you can do other things with that. For example, you can use it to solve linear systems, etc. Okay, and how that all fits in, you'll see later in the week. Now, what do we do in this course? We do goal-oriented programming. What if we make our precondition A is equal to A hat? And what if we make our postcondition A contains L and U? Let's write that like that, with kind of a funny slash here. Where and L times matrix U is equal to the original contents of A. Now, what do we mean by this particular notation here? Well, notice that you could take these entries here and put them right there and, in effect, store L and U both in the same matrix by virtue of the fact that you know that the diagonal elements of L are 1 and therefore you don't need to store them. And what that means is that you can take the result of computing the LU factorization and you can have it overwrite the original matrix so that you don't need additional space for the result. And that's typically how it's done. People who do numerical computing are typically very stingy with memory. They want memory to be used for useful things, and therefore if you compute the LU factorization of matrix A, you want to in place replace A with the result so that you don't need additional memory. Now, over the years, different algorithms for computing the LU factorization have been found, inspired by different ways in which this computation can be arranged. And as a matter of fact, over the years since, you know, this is sometimes referred to as Gaussian elimination was invented, five different algorithms came out. Okay, and, you know, so every couple of decades somebody would find another algorithm. What you're going to find out is that in about a half an hour, with the tools that we've given you, you can derive all five of those algorithms off the bat. 
And then you can go a step further and derive blocked algorithms that will attain high performance and implement them and you're done. Okay? And that kind of gives you an idea of the power of what we have now given to you. Okay, let's get started.